All right, so today, um, at the request of a couple of speaker manufacturers, we are going to do a phase coherence test between four, what I would call probably of the upper end of point and source 15 and a horn boxes. We've got a Meyer CQ1, it's a 15 and a horn. We've got a View Audio Technic H15, which is also a 15 and a horn. Uh, Lacoustics Arc, 15 and a horn. And a JBL VP7212 64DP, okay. which is a 12 and a horn, so it's kind of the odd man out a little bit, but it's a powered box we have here in the shop, so we're going to... And one you guys have done a lot of gigs with. Tons and tons of gigs with. It's been a great workhorse, front fill, side fill, all of the above, but... Um, Basically what we're shooting for is to, although each one of them may have some form of user controllable DSP, these boxes are completely flat from the factory as they come out of the box shipped to you, nothing colored, nothing EQ'd, nothing, nothing. We want to see what one of them has the best phase coherence. Um, so we're not going to do a subjective test to say, I like this one better than that one. We're simply going to let Smart do the talking. And we've uh, measured out a line across the floor and we're going to place the microphone in front of every box at the same distance, play the same source noise and take a phase coherence trace from each one of the boxes and see how they stack up to one another. There we so go. So that's the test for today. So it's an objective shootout. Objective shootout. For once, I don't have to <laughs> offer up an opinion of what one we think is the best or what one I think is the best. We're simply going to show you some uh, screenshots of what smart uh, what smart found so. okay and what what uh, what are we using for a uh, measurement we've got smart v6 because I can't afford v7 um, first one first one here is Meyer CQ um, and we'll just go ahead and capture this one because we're gonna go back and look at them all later anyways um, and as far as face coherence I mean from like 300, 300 on up, I mean, that's yeah excessively coherent. And I mean, really, the only anomalies in that 300 range, which I'm not exactly sure where their crossover is. Right. Um, I don't know how low they want to play that horn. Um, I think 300 might be a little low to take the horn down to, but I don't know what they've got going on there, because usually anomalies like that are kind of around a, around a crossover point. Right. Um, but that's... As a systems engineer, if I went and turned the rig on and I saw that, I wouldn't be sad at that at all. View is pretty face coherent too. I'm gonna sneak back in here real quick. And I'm gonna capture that. Um, I'm Um, again, I wouldn't be too displeased seeing that face coherence. I mean, it's fairly coherent in the high range, but certainly doesn't have the face coherence that the Meyer box did. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, down to arc. Arc is very, very similar, almost identical to the view as far as that goes, which again, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be displeased. Um, I wouldn't be displeased at all seeing phase coherence like that walking in. Um, I guess kind of funny to note, I mean, because I didn't take it out yet, but the purple line is uh, EQ on the view box. Okay. How much more high end, and I'm sure that's probably boosted inside of the preset. Right. But how much more high end extension is happening in the arc than was happening in the view? In the view. And, and then we'll go down to our our low JBL.
that. I mean, it's probably, I would say JBL's more of a middle of the road product than my or L Acoustics review was intended to be. Right. And not bad. It's still not bad. I mean, it's still pretty coherent from, you know, maybe like, uh, like one and a half K on out. Right. That we're looking that it's really coherent. And I mean, the rest of the area is not bad, but it's but it's it, not it's, it's not as good as the other ones. I mean, if we were to go back and uh, uh, bring in uh, bring in the rest of them. The uh, purple and the green were uh, purple and the green were view and L acoustics. Right. Um, we could actually go. purple and the green were L acoustics, and um, yellows JBL and blue. I mean, geez, they, they were phase coherent. You know, like a good solid thousand hertz lower than everybody, else's everybody else on, on Meyer. We can get some actual screenshots of this okay. from my computer that we can send you. That excellent. Might okay, so we can really see it better. The thing, but um, and when we look down too, I mean, EQ wise, they're all pretty similar. I mean, the the darkest one out of all of them for sure is a Meyer, and I mean, they got like a you know kind of that like one dB per octave slope heading right. all the way out. Out. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, uh, the arc definitely has, and again, that's probably based on DSP settings. Yeah, yeah. Way more high end present than all of them, uh, and oddly enough, it looks like uh, at maybe about 10k where the view starts to roll off, it's more like 11 and a half, maybe almost 12k where the JBL's rolling off. Um, the arc's rolling off at about the same place um, as the view, but a far greater amplitude where it starts to roll off. Right. You know? I mean, we're probably a good solid, uh, maybe 6 dB hotter in that 10K range where the arc starts to roll off than where the view's rolling off. Um, but then when we get down to Myers, I mean, they're starting that, they're starting that roll off down like almost in the, the 2, 2.5K two range where they're starting that the slope down. That slope down. Um, where it looks like everybody looks like a, a really similar filter on the L acoustics and the JBL. Yeah, it does. Kind of like not like, exactly in the same place. Not but the same place, but same same slope filter. Yeah. Kind of looks like yeah, very 24 dB Linkwitz mm -hmm. Riley kind of a kind of a shape where it almost looks like a, looks like view maybe in like a really really light Buttersworth or even like a long Bessel filter up on the top there just a really light slope to come down but I mean that uh you know I mean if we're looking at that and they want the proof in the pudding hands down Myers the most phase coherent box out of the four boxes here um the view in the arc um the view uh, uh H15 and the arc there are basically spot on as far as phase coherence I mean they're almost tracking each other yeah, yeah, really. I mean, close. just almost as as perfect as they could, and then the JBL is definitely the the lowly one as far as phase coherence goes. But all that to being said, whoever placed first and whoever placed fourth, not one of them is bad. Yeah, it's like the Olympics, you know what yeah. I mean? Where it's, you know, <laughs> oh, you didn't win the bronze medal <laughs> by but four you, hundredths of a second, right? But you, <laughs> but you were better than like nine billion other people in the world. Uh, as a systems engineer, if I was going to go in and, and have these be my PA for today, um, I wouldn't be displeased. You with wouldn't any be happy, and you you wouldn't walk in and say, "Oh crap," right. about any of them, because there are definitely some instances where you walk in and you have that, you know. Your butt cheeks kind of pucker up, and you're just like, "Oh, it's gonna be a long day." I, I don't see, uh, I don't see a long day with any of these, as long as you're using them uh, within the realm of their capability. You know, from a, a starting perspective, phase coherence and EQ wise, they're all relatively similar. Are gonna give you a, a a similar product, but remember that they are all just a powered 12 or a 15 and a horn. Right. And they're only going to give you what they're going to give you. Exactly. You know, yeah. This isn't going to be 
uh, you know, 120 dB at the back of the arena. This is going to be, you know, 400 people in a little room, right? A glorified speaker on a stick gig kind of a deal. But now, uh, price wise, they're all in the same general price range. In the same general price range, save for that you have to buy an amp for that arc. So. The arc okay. is definitely more expensive than the rest when you yeah, factor you, that yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. It's substantially more expensive. Yeah, almost probably 50% more expensive than all of the above because... Because of having to buy the amp. Having to buy the amp and, and um, you know, if you really want to use uh, the, the, the presets that are available from L Acoustics, you know, you're bound into the, the lab group and arena or the the lake arena with mm -hmm. some so even if you didn't want to buy let's say a plm 10k or a 20k you would still have to go buy your flavor of amp and a lm26 or lm44 to be able to put that preset in right or go the the la8 route and, and get the you know the uh, advertised right. acoustics amps that they have now so okay but, so now for all of you out in video land, we're gonna subjectively listen to music while you guys click on the next link. <laughs>